one of the things that living on a boat has taught me is that you can't have a lot of stuff. Or if you do, you have to pay uh, 175 bucks a month for a storage facility, which is kind of crazy. So Louise and I have been living on this idea of getting rid of clutter, getting rid of extra stuff. Like sort of anything you bring on the boat, you got to take something off the boat. I mean, we live basically in 800 square feet. I don't know how, what the actual dimensions are. But it's, it's a small space for Louise and me and three cats and a dog. And so we've been going through these periodic purges of all the clutter. Well, this article in the opinion pages by Pamela Druckerman of the New York Times, it's titled The Clutter Cures Illusory Joy. And she points out uh, Marie Kondo's uh, book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, is number one in the New York Times uh, list of self-help books. Um, everybody seems to be passionate about you know minimalism, right? Of tidying up, of getting rid of your extra stuff. Ryan Nicodemus, uh, she writes, is the co-creator of the Minimalist Blogs. He said, as she writes, he was an overworked, divorced, depressive who drank and used drugs until he got rid of 80% of his belongings. A month later, he says, my entire perspective has changed, and then I thought to myself, maybe some other people might find value in my story. And then, of course, he wrote the book about it, and now he's got a new career. She says that this whole clutter cascade started 25 years ago and China started sending us junk. But I can tell you that I know that that's not the case because my parents' home was cluttered when I was a little kid because they were antique collectors. They thought, this was our retirement. We will sell off these antiques. And all through my childhood, we were traveling. Every, every Saturday and Sunday, we would go to some little town and hit the, the Salvation Army and the, the, you know, every place else looking for, you know, books or glass or postcards or buttons that had great value that, you know, were selling for 25 cents. So I don't think it really just began 25 years ago. I think this is part of human nature. But she's talking about how this is such a big fad. There are uh, online communities, she writes, for people who have vowed to remove 40 bags of stuff from their homes over 40 days or to pare back to only 100 possessions. But then she says, but the more stuff I shed, the more I realize that we declutterers feel besieged by more than just our possessions. We're also overwhelmed by the intangible detritus of 21st century. Unreturned emails, unprinted family photos, ceaseless ticker, ticker of other lives, people's lives on Facebook, heightened demands of parenting, and the suspicion that we'll be checking our phones every 15 minutes forever. She says, maybe if I declutter, I'll be happy, but I doubt it. She says, I'm starting to suspect that the joy of ditching all our stuff is just as illusory as the joy of acquiring it all was. I remember when we lived in New Hampshire, or in Vermont, and I had 6,000 books in my library. I gave away half of them when we moved to Oregon, and then we packed up, so I had 3,000 books. We now have about 2,950 books in storage from our Oregon experience, and we have maybe 50 books on the boat. I really liked having 6,000 books. I really loved my library. So, do things own you or do you own your things? You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 202-536-2370. And how do you find a comfortable balance for yourself between your things owning you and you owning your things? 